Hello everyone, Bruno Capono here. I'm live, first of all. I'm coming from Canada, I'm streaming from Canada. And I just want to thank everyone in that has been part of this amazing event to put it all together. So thanks to Marco and to all of the people who are basically doing this is great. And as I mentioned, my name is Bruno. I am a Microsoft MVP, probably not in the accent. I am not Canadian. I was born in Argentina, live in Spain, moved to Canada five years ago. And today I want to share with you a couple of fun stuff. This is not a standard technical session. I am going to do a lot of coding, playing around with the drone, so we can take a look and we can learn all together. So as I mentioned, let's start. You can find me here in Twitter mostly, at Bruno. I have my GitHub also. This is my formal name everywhere, but mostly by Twitter you can find. In the GitHub, I use it mostly to put the, everything that I'm going to do, do today is going to be shared there. So I don't do a lot of stuff in GitHub, just sharing my content. But today, and this is important, and I always start here, let me give you a big warning about what you are going to see today. Sorry for the crap animations, the crappy demos and crappy whatever. This is my learning path. This is what I've been doing to learn. And I hope that you, you can enjoy it. The content that we are going to see today are mostly focused on these five or six stuff. All the code is going to be in Python. I am not, uh, I've been doing Python for the last five years. Uh, it's a nice ride, it's a nice experience. Right now, uh, I basically spend more, most of my time in, in, in Python, uh, but I am a C-sharp developer. You can find this session also uh, in C-sharp, the same drone stuff that I did for the .NET show a couple of months ago, but today it's all about Python. I will use a couple of community services to show what we can do with the drone, how we can do some AI on top of the drone, and I also, uh, talk a little about face recognition, why I'm using Docker to, to do this AI, to, to host and use these AI models, and also uh, communications because the drone is tricky. But this is, this is the, 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 main, the main content here. And again, last slide, big warning, when I see this meme a couple of months ago, this is myself, basically, I am not as handsome as Ryan Reynolds, but I do a lot of advising on code, but you probably won't see my talk. So let's start. How this is started, how this is, how we get here. So a couple of months ago, I'm sorry, maybe a year ago, time flies in these days, a, a colleague here in Canada uh, told me about this drone. This is a toy drone. And he told me that, hey, maybe we want to hack the drone and do some programming on top of the drone, and the full story there. But when you work with drones and you try to program the drones, you usually find that these are expensive drones, that usually these drones are a couple of thousand dollars. And this is a toy. This is usually around $100. And if you get this on a sales, you can get it for $70. So it's not very expensive. But what I really like about the drone is that it has a couple of very cool features. So it doesn't have, an example, it doesn't have the best camera. It's not a full HD 4K camera, but 720p, it's good enough to, to, do, to, to capture the live feed or to capture photos and work with that. The battery is not great, but again, this is a toy. 10, 15 minutes of battery, it's, it's really great. And also it has two antennas, two Wi-Fi and wireless antennas, so basically, it gives you a very good sign out. Depending on where you are, and I'm here in my office, surrounded for my technology everywhere, so the, 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 sign, the sign here is crappy. But you, if you go outside, you can fly this drone 20, 30 meters outside of you, and it's still going to, to work great. So I really, really like it. And then it has a couple of features, like uh, it's automatically uh, make the stabilization automatically. It will go down if it's running out of battery a couple of very cool stuff. But as I mentioned, what did really get my attention was when I saw this. I started to, to, to do a research of the drone and I found that there are a couple of contests for kids or programs for kids or whatever for kids that they are teaching kids to, to, to control the drone using a Scratch. A Scratch is a programming language. It's a drag and drop block programming language where you basically connect everything. You don't write code. You basically connect these dots. And I was thinking, hey, if there is a scratch 
uh, I don't know template, I don't know the Scratch name. By the way, the Scratch is an amazing tool for kids by the MIT people. Take a look if you don't know. But I was thinking, if there is someone create this layer on a Scratch to control the drone, there is probably going to be an SDK. And I started saying, if there is an SDK, there should be a programming simulator and whatever, whatever, whatever. And no, there is no SDK for the drone. There is no official SDK. You can download the JavaScript, C++, Python, C Sharp, or whatever SDK. But down deep in the Rice Robotic, which is the company who makes the drone okay, website, there is this PDF. And there is a PDF, which is basically called, it's named Telo SDK, whatever. It's not an SDK, but it gives you enough information to understand how you can interact with the drone, how you can control the drone, how you can send commands to the drone and read information for the drone. So with that, depending on your knowledge, in this case for me it was Python, you can basically start to write your own SDK. And what I did here is, first of all, I understand that the drones work. When you connect to the drone, the drone works with three ports. You connect to the drone and the drone will open using three ports. And by the way, this is not TCP, this is UDP. UDP is one of the not most friendly uh, protocols for communication ever, but this is what we have. Going back, we have three ports. One port is to send commands. We can send commands to the drone. So we said to the drone, uh, take off and we start flying, flip and do a flip, move right, move left, whatever. Once we send the command, we don't know what's happening. UDP is not a TCP with a handshake and a connection. We send the command and we wait for the next. And the possible response that we have there is an OK or error, but we don't know what's happening. If it's an error, why? Then we have another part where we can read information from the drone. We can read information like, in example, the altitude, the time of fly, the accelerometer values, which is kind of very important. And the third part is for the field of it. I will get there. But with, all, with these three, I can start to understand, I can start to think, OK, I can create something. I know how the SDK should work. I know how should I communicate to the drone. So I started to work. This is a freaking old joke about UDP. But this is what's happening with UDP. You send message and you don't know when you send one, two, three, if they are going to arrive in one, two, three order, or they are going to arrive in one, three, two. And you don't know if they are going to even arrive there. But hey, there is UDP. So going back here, going back to the to see how we're going to work, I started to do my test. I started to find something. I started to, to grow and create the SDK. And basically, when I started to put together everything for this demo, what I realized is that because I am connecting to the drone using my wireless connection, I need to set up something like this, where my computing, my computer, I'm sorry, is connected to a wired network to go to the internet, and then I'm connected to the Wi-Fi to the drone. That's why. And I am going to go slow with the slide from now on. That's why you are going to see this a lot. So this is the drone here. Let me take it out. So there it is, the drone, crappy, amazing drone. This is what we have. When I turn on the drone, there should be a left link in there. Probably see the, the, the link in there from time to time. It's very small left. But at this moment, I will have here a new network in my, oh, I am here, let me hide myself. A new network in my house, which is going to be called Telo and a number. This is the drone network. So this is what I need to connect. I am not going to connect to that network using, uh, using Windows because Windows will try to reconnect. So what I do is I know the IP of the drone. This is the, <coughs> the drone IP when I connect it. What I want to do here is basically, where is my command here? I have a command with this net, WLAN connect, uh, WLAN connect and the name of the, the connection. And because the drone is on, now I am connected. So this is what I am going to use most of the time to basically check if I am connected or not. And you will see that I have these pink windows here in the bottom of the put it here in the bottom left corner to see if I am connected. So right now I am connected to the drone. If I go back here to Windows 10, I will see that here, again, there it is. I am connected to the drone network. Of course, it doesn't give me internet, but I am connected to the network and the network is there and the drone is there. So <clears throat> next step for me, going back to slides, next step for me was, okay, I am connected to the drone. I know the SDK. Let's build something. Let's create something. And the main stuff that I'm going to create 
is going to basically send a couple of commands to the drone to, to connect to the drone. In a live demo, I will make it fly. I will make it fly at the end of the demo so I don't break it. And then read information for the drone like the battery. So let's start to do some coding. And before this, let me move this away. We don't need information here. There it is. And let's go to Python. So what I have here, I am going to create a new file, demo.pi. And just to show you where we are, I am going to run this in Python. So let me go here. Let's clean this. Go to this location. And do an analysis. So I am working. This is my working folder. It's an empty file right now, just created. It's 10 a.m. here in Canada. So let's start to work. Let me make the code a little bigger. So first thing that I'm going to do, I am going to make a going to import a couple of a couple of libraries here. I am going to work with sockets, so that's fine. I have my sockets. I am going to use time to control how I am sending information. And I also go into import threading uh, because I need to work this in multi-thread mode. So once I have this, next step will be create a couple of receive information. So later I'm going to define a client socket and I'm going to open that socket. And what I have here is a while true, while true event. Again, remember, crappy code, don't do this in production. I'm going to read this forever. And I'm going to read this in chunks of 20, 1024 bytes. And this is going to be my response here, which is a global variable. And this is basically when I send the command, it's going to say OK or error. And then I have another one using a different socket, the state socket, in a smaller chunk. And this one is going to have information about the drone. It's going to have battery, tempo and time of flight, temperature, other information. And again, a while through in an eternal while loop, reading this information. My next step will be OK, now we send information, now we receive information. Let's write a couple of lines of code to send information. And how do we do this? So I have a socket, the client socket, oh, sorry, the client socket, and I'm going to send a string here, which is going to be my command. And my command needs to be encoded in UTF-8. This is the important, and I have the address of the drone later. What I do here in this line, it's a very small, basically, validation. When I have my timestamp for a date, I send the command, I check the response variable during one second, um, for, uh, during five seconds, and if I don't have anything, I return false or I return response. Basically, to see if I have a response or not from the drone, and then I have a couple of over, um, overloads of the function here, basically checking if I have OK or lowercase or uppercase as the response. So I have my send information, my read information. Next step will be, OK, let's connect to the drone. And this is the part that I know the drone IP. I already connected to the drone, so I know my IP. Of course, it needs to be in configuration file or whatever. It's so hard code. I know the two ports that I'm going to use to send commands and to receive commands, 8889 and 8890. And I will have here a last reset time uh, so I can know when was my last connection to the drone. So I will open my two ports. I will open a client socket and I will open a state socket. Remember, one is for send command and the other is for receive information. With all of this, what I need to do, I start to read this information, but I, do, I am not going to do this in the main thread because it's going to block my, my main application. So I create two threads, receiving threads and a state threads, which basically point to these two receive data functions that I declare at the top. So it's very simple. It's very straightforward. What we are doing here is basically connecting to the drone and in two separate threads, read information from the drone. And then I can write my app, which is the fun part. So this is everything here. This is this, the, the 10 line of code that we need to interact with the drone. The first command that I'm going to send to the drone is going to be an string which is called command. This is this start and change the drone to understand that we are in SDK mode. If I don't send this, it's not going to, to work. And then I'm going to send the command to read the battery. Again, all of this information is in the PDF that is available there. So I will read the battery values. I will have this as an option. 
let's do some defensive programming here, five seconds sleep, and then show the battery value. So let's run this. In order to run this, again, I'm still connected, which is kind of fine. And let's see, my file is my file is here, perfect. So let's do Python, demo.pi, and now it's connecting to the drone, waiting five seconds, and I should get a value here, which is battery 43%. Oh my god, I need to change to charge it. So this is the hello world. It's the crappiest and less exciting hello world ever, but I get the battery. And I was kind of in luck because as you see here in the bottom left, I just get deconnected to the drone. So let me show you. Let's let's do a small change here so we can have it connect to the drone again. So we can show how this is really working. It's connecting. There it is, it's connected. Another command. So what I am going to do here is here, when I get the list of values, I am going to print the list of values. And save it. And Let's run this again. So what you see here is all of the information that is coming in the drone in real time. And if I start to move the drone, oh, sorry, five seconds is kind of too fast. Let's do this 30 seconds. Minimize and again. Here, the drone is not moving everything. When I start to move the drone around, it starts to change because I get information around the accelerometer. So I can move it around and I will see this if I stay with the drone without any move. I am not moving the drone there, so it's going to stay like this. If I start to move the drone, it's going to change because I have all of its values. As soon, and now, as soon as it's finished, let's take a look at the information that I get from the drone. So I think I put it 30 seconds. So what I have here, I have a pitch, roll and yaw, which is basically the inclination. I, can, I have here the temp L and temp H, which is temperature high and temperature low. I also have time of flight, 10 minutes. I don't know why. I think, I think it's in eight minutes. I can need to double check. Then I have the battery, which is 43%, a barometer, another time, and then I have the acceleration, which is the value that is changing. We can see here this changing when I move the drone around. So this is the accelerometer that is inside there. So I am reading information in real time for the drone. I will plug the drone just in case here. So while I am speaking, it's charging. So I am getting information in real time. So the first step, which is connect to the drone and get info, is kind of done. It's kind of, hey, that's great. It's there. Let's go with this. So oh, let me go here to my side. So once I, I, I know how to connect to the drone, my next step, my next challenge was, OK, let's try to do something with the camera. I know that the camera is going to be a UDP connection again. It's going to open in the port 11,111. 11, I'm sorry, 11,111. So I started to play around to see what we can do. I start, at first, I tried to connect to the drone using VLC. Didn't connect. I found a cool tool. I learned about this FFMPG to connect. It was great. I had a delay of a couple of seconds. So I was playing around. And then I remember, hey, I know OpenCV. I've been doing a lot of stuff with OpenCV. I've been playing around a lot with OpenCV to do machine learning, computer vision, and a lot, a lot of stuff. So I was thinking, hey, maybe I can use OpenCV to connect. So what I did. Uh, where we are here, new file, camera.pi. So what I did here is I have the full set of code that we already seen to receive that data, to send data, to connect to the thread. This is kind of my base lines of code. I have everything received here. And the main difference here is that I am using this library, which is CD2, which is OpenCV. I write a lot about how you can install this. The, the amazing thing about OpenCV is that you can use it on Windows, on Mac, on Linux, uh, in, in plenty of other, in, in plenty places. Uh, I prefer to use this using virtual environments in, in Python, mostly because I need a UI. I can, to be using this in Docker, it will be kind of tricky. But hey, this is the step. I already have my code. I am also going to open OpenCV. So let's see 
the next, the camera connection. So I send the first command. I am already connected to the drawer. I send the first command to enter in the ESTK mode, which is the command, and then I need to send this command. Stream on. Stream on is important because this is where I basically said to the drone, okay, I am going to connect to the UDP for the camera, start streaming. So that's it. I need to say to the, the drone, I need to connect. What I do here is I basically do some, I, I want to show you here, but I do some defensive programming because open the drone camera, it's super easy, super, super easy. So I can do this, which is basically the UDP port, the drone IP and the port, and the video capture from OpenCV will open this. If I change this, and instead of this, I put drone number, I, I don't know, sorry, index number zero, it will try to open a local uh, camera that I have in my machine. If I have more, I can do the one, two, three, four, whatever here. I can even create a new other, oops, sorry, other cam, which is instead of UDP, use RSTP, in another IP with another port, and OpenCV will open almost everything. And this is kind of amazing because the same lines that I already know to do computer vision are the ones I'm going to use to open the camera. Once I have this video capture, what I can do, I start to read the frame. So I can read the frame, I can read another frame, and the frame is an image. So I have the feed for the camera. Let's show how we can do this. So I am going to use the battery as the connection point to be connected to the drone and to get information from there. So I will do an eternal loop, read the battery values, and then I am going to say video capture grid. And this is going to be a frame. I am going to resize the frame. So we have a, a, a decent image. Just remember that this is 7, 720p. We don't need the full 720, 640 for, eight, for 480 is good enough. And I'm going to show this. And let's change the title to and rocks. And I am going to also, because I'm using OpenCV and the standard Windows show from OpenCV, I am going to wait. If I press the letter Q in my keyboard, it's going to disconnect and close the application. And lesson learned here, I also need to basically, when I shoot down the application, I need to, shoot, I need to send this comma, stream off, so the drone stops streaming, because if not, it's going to get into crazy state, and I need to take out the battery, wait a couple of seconds, and start the drone again. So I have my camera, I have my code, oh, sorry. Let's review this uh, again, similar code as before, but with OpenCV, I am going to open the camera in the port 11.11.1, and then in a while to, I am going to read a frame from the camera, precise the frame, and show it in the window. That's basically it. That's what we have. So go back to our code. The drone is disconnected. Both on the left corner, I need to connect again. But I want to show you here that I have my camera file created right now. So let's connect to the drone. I need to turn the drone on again. So I am turning the drone, waiting here. Let's send a couple of commands to connect to the drone. And as soon as the ping uh, start to reply that I am connected, we can start to use it. One more time, just in case. And there it is. So what I can do now, I can do a Python camera file, the one that I just created. And what I am going to see here in the in the log, this is all the valid code that I have from OpenCV. And after a second, this is the live feed from the drone. So I start to move the drone around. You are going to see here the live feed from the drone. So what you are seeing there is the live feed. I can show you, I can put myself, you can see my green screen in the back. I'm using green screen so you can see me what we have. I used to have a cool office, not there anymore. But hey, this is the drone and it's working decently fast here. I have tons of devices here, Raspberry Pis and whatever. So hey, I am basically using 10 extra lines of code to connect to the drone. And the drone is, is here, the drone is taking a photo of myself and everything. And it is, it is, it is it's not very complicated. I can, let me stop it here. And it's also work very fast. If I go here, remove these lines, because this is a question that I have from time to time. I, someone asked me how fast this is working. 
And I said, okay, let's let's add some lines to do uh, FPS, the frame per seconds. So I will get the time, read the camera, and after I read the camera, do some kind of calculations here, and I will get how many frames per second I am working, and I will put this in the window. So if I do this again, and I run the, the, the camera file, after it's connected, we will see this is the two seconds delay that they have. We will see here that we have a 45. I make my numbers, it's between 45 and something. And if I start to move this around again, it's kind of very fast here. Let's do this. 37, as I mentioned, 33. So depending on what we have here, we are going to have more or less uh, frames, but it's between 30 and 50. And it's good enough to work. It's good enough to start to, hey, I already have images here. I can start to do my stuff. I can start to analyze my images, do some machine learning, and do crazy things. So I'm checking the questions. No question here. Perfect. So let's see here in the meantime. Let me go back here and I start to talk. Once I have this, my first demo. My first idea here to see, okay, let's do some face detection. Face detection is super popular. It's one of the things I've been doing for the, I don't know how many times it's here. I love this GIF. It's super old, but it's kind of cool enough to show how it works. And I write a lot. You can take a look in my blog and there about how we can do uh, image recognition, computer vision using the camera. And for me right now, the drone is kind of a movable camera. I can move the drone around and it will have the plug this in and we will have the chance to <clears throat> to connect and to see to analyze so we can do object detection face recognition face detections uh, this is my little daughter and myself in my old office where we were trying this and you can see I am doing the face uh, the facial features they are detected so the cool things about this is that because there is so many examples there one of the easiest way to try face detection is use this algorithm, the Viola Jones algorithm, which is 20 years old. And it's basically pick up an image. We need to compare this image to a great scale image. And from there, start to apply some algorithm. We're going to analyze the, the difference in the lights and so define it in, in, in a file. And try to find this T section between your forehead and your nose and the dead faces. It's not the best, it's not the best uh, algorithm I strongly suggest not to use this if you're going to production, but it's super easy to implement for testing. And the cool thing about this is that because it's used a technique which is called hard cascades, these cascades are XML files with the definition of the operation that we need to do. OpenCV allows us to do this in one line of code. And they have trained these high hard cascades, uh, and they have, this is the OpenCV public repository in GitHub, and we can go there and use one for detect uh, full body persons or for detect uh, faces or smiles, or even I'm going to show later a banana. So we can do these kind of things and it's very easy. So let me show you how we can do this. Here we are, let's create a new file. Let's name this one face.pi. There it is. And Common call, everything that we already seen, connecting, sending information, receiving states, uh, connecting to the camera, everything that we already know is here, 100 lines of code. So this is what at the end should be an SDK. And this is the moment that we start to add our own code. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to load the definition. Remember that I show you here that, oh, I show you here that one of the, the definition for this frame, this face detection is in this XML file. So what we are going to do is we are going to ask OpenCV to create a new cascade classifier where the definition is going to be in this file. And I need to copy the files to the location. This is the frontal face. Yes. And I am not going to go deep here, explaining what is in the file. This is what we have. It's a huge XML with a lot of stages. It's a stage. You can see it's kind of one of the operations that we are doing to recognize something. You can train your own hard cascade. There is not the best way to do face or object detection. You can use it, but this is good enough to work. So we have here one to detect frontal faces. Then 
next step will be, okay, let's analyze, let's connect to the drone, let's get frames, images from the drone, and let's analyze for faces. So same code that we did before here, read a frame from the, from the drone, I will resize the frame, so we have a 640 frame here, and this is the important line. I will convert this frame, the new frame, to a grayscale image because we need to do grayscale. We uh, our cascades work with grayscales, and then I am going to use the face cascade, which is the cascade of the training to I'm sorry, loading the definition to detect faces, and I'm going to ask, hey, cascade, detect. Do your stuff, detect your stuff. And then I'm going to have results here. And the result is an array, which is going to have elements depending on what we find. But it's going to be, it's going to, to have elements and it's going to basically give me an array of four numbers, top right, bottom left, which is basically the places where we detect the, the face was detected. So I will show a rectangle here for with the detected face. So let's change this for code, gen, and faces. Let's run this face.pi. Of course, probably I am disconnected here. Let me show you. This is the file that I just created the file. This is the XML that we have. And we need to connect to the drone again. So I need to turn the drone on. Go back here. Send the connect line. This will take a couple of seconds, as usual. This is my perfect time to drink some water or coffee. One more time. I should be connected. Come on, ping. There it is. I am connected. So let's do Python face PI. I am running this. And when I have this up and running, I should get the camera view, the camera view. It will be slightly slower because for each frame I'm analyzing here. So I can go here and start to do something like this. And as you see, sometimes there are as the face is detected. It's kind of tricky because if I move my face to the side, it's not detected anymore. So it's kind of working, but it's not the best one. Remember, Arcas case is not the best. I always like to show here. This, this other demo, let me go here. I have this video file. Let me put the video here and my feed in the top. I will mute the video. And this is a video for the global AI community. And as you can see there, it's detecting a couple of faces. If I run the video in real time, is going to there it is. It's going to detect faces, a lot of faces, and it's kind of great. It's kind of nice to see how it works because we can see faces detected while the video is moving. Uh, if the image is getting too fast, it's going to be tricky. But this is an option. This is something that we can do. It's kind of easy. Let me go back here to detect my face. You can see that the face detected in the back. Let's close the app. And this is something which is basically the ABC of what we can do. I can detect faces. I can do, I can write these lines of code, load the cascade, and then cascade, do your stuff, detect the face. And I can even go deeper. And there is there is another file here. Can't remember the name, the, the number. Uh, this one, 43. So in this one, I load two classifiers, one to detect faces and another to detect bananas. Someone trains a classifier using hard cascade to detect bananas. So I can load these two cascades, and when I have the frame from the, the image frame from the camera of the drone, I can say, okay, face cascade, detect faces and show faces. Oh, sorry. So detect faces and show faces. And later, detect banana and show banana which is basically the same. And this kind of works. I can go here, run this one. Let me see if I am still connected. I hope so. Yes, I'm still connected. So let's go back to my terminal. I think it's 43. So this is the face and banana detection. It's going to do the same. So 
This is taking the banana there. Oops, sorry. sorry. This is plug it. So I can go here, show my face is there. And you see a banana detector here, which is not nice. If I put the banana here, oh, I think it's it gets stopped. Yes, this is happening from time to time. The drone gets stuck, so let me close the app. This is what's happening in real life demos. The app stops working. So you see that it's detecting a banana here, in example, which is kind of uh, kind of weird. Why is detecting a banana there? Uh, a banana there. So it's it's kind of weird, and this is because, as I mentioned, Hal Cascade is not the best technique to to do this. But we can do a couple of we can do a, a, a couple of options here, so we can improve the way that we are detecting, and uh, we can use other techniques. So, an example, this one, this is another sample, and in this one. Instead of doing the detection using DNN, sorry, using hard cascades, what I have here is I have a frame. When I have the frame, I am using a, mo a model, a dot, uh, an AI training model, a deep neural network training model to detect faces, and this one is basically much more complex and much more robust in order to do this. This is the model. I am loading the model. The model is uh, training on the SSD. It's a coffee model, but I can read here the coffee model. I can use OpenCV to do this. Uh, usually, I charge this to use. If you don't have a CPU, you can. I will try to use my GPU. I think it's not configured, but it's going to work. But this is, should be much more faster. So let's run the 45. I need to connect to the drone again. Turn on the drone, send the command. Then Python 45, send the command again. Should be connected anytime soon. There it is. So I can run this, and this one is going to do basically the same that we see before, but instead of using a hard cascade, it's going to detect faces using a using a .NET, a, I'm sorry, a deep neural network model. And let's see this because the important part is that when I enable the definition, it's so much smooth. I can move my head around, it's going to be detecting. As you can see here, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if I turn this very far away, it's still working. If I go back to my video, the original video, let me try to show you everything. And I point the drone to the video somewhere there and start the video and start the detection, you see that it literally does not miss a face. If the signal is good, it is not struggling with all of the noise that we have in the back, it's detecting a lot of faces here and it's super, super accurate. And the main difference, as I mentioned, is that we are not using a hard cascade here. I am using another model. I have more demos here because this is the moment where I started to talk about uh, what we can do. I show in the, in the demos, I show how you can create your own models. This is the ABC of machine learning where, oh, let me close this. This is the ABC of machine learning, where you have your data, you train your data, and then you use it, your data. If you want to train model for auto detection, one very, very cool platform is Custom Vision. Custom Vision allows you to basically upload images, train a model, and then you can evaluate your model. And I, I did a couple of these. I will show you this very fast. I have this, you, you need to go to customvision.ea. Uh, if you have an Azure subscription, you can test it. This you can test it for free. So I can show you how we can do something like a drawing. Resource, I need to create a new resource. Sorry about that. And let's do this if code gen, the enterprise. Yes, I know, resource. Another resource, oh my God. So I create this one, this one.
Sorry about this, I, I should probably change. I have a couple of these created, but let's create this in West US. Let me change my subscription. Free trial. Okay, I don't know what's happened. One of my my subscription has an issue, but this is the place that you can create and do your own. Let me change this quickly to another environment. Okay, I think this is going to be good enough. So I have another environment here for testing. I suppose I think that this is up and running and this is good. So let's try it. I have used this before. So let me show you how we can quickly create a, a project here. Yes. Let's delete this one. That's okay. So let's do this drawing code gen, drawing code gen. And this is going to use it's going to be a classification project. We want to do classification for a single class. And uh, general one, don't have time to go here deep. But the idea is that, as I mentioned, you can upload images here. So I can add images. I can go here to my disk. Where is my computer? There is my computer. Disk C, machine learning. Uh, drawings, fish. I can add these files, which are basically hand drawing fish. Add a tag here, which is going to be fish, and upload these files. Perfect. Let's add more images. Once I have my fish, I will add some flowers. Have my flowers here. I add my tag, which is going to be flower, and add that, add my images. The same with the last one, which is humans. People, I can already add my previous tags, or I can add human, and I will upload these files. And when I have this, I have 28 files, 24 files here, the representing drawings for image, fish, and flower, and I can train my model. So I will do quick training. It should be fast. I, I, I'm sorry about this. I don't know what's happened with the other the other environment. It was working until I started, but once I, this is trained, what I am going to have is a model. I can use this model in the cloud, which is going to basically give me the chance to upload an image and it will analyze the image. And it will analyze the image and I will see if the image is a, fly, is a fish, a flower or a human. And also there, when I'm analyzing the image, I can even create, a, I will get information like I am 20% sure this is a human and 40% sure this is a flower. So it's up to us as a developer to realize to see if we can use this or not. So let me switch to the other one, to the other project. Because it's taking so long. This is demo moment. <clears throat> I think that I have this trainer. Let's see if I already train it. Yes. So we train it the same format with images, everything, single tag per image. So we train it. And what I can do, I can start to test here. So I can open paint, for example. Let me change the size of my line and I can do some, I don't know, an ugly fish, which is angry. And let's do this code gen. And I will save this <coughs> in my desktop as fishy. And then I can do a new one. Let's do a human, very long feet, but he's happy. And let's do this as human and let's write a third one, which is going to be nothing at all. And uh, let's go for this. So I have three images just created. I can go here to my files. Let me go here to my desktop and upload, in example, the first one, the fishing. This is going to use the trained model. It's going to analyze the image. And in this example, it's 95.9 
sure that is a fish. And somehow, in 0 0.4, uh, the model score this at 0 0.4 as a flower. I don't know why. This is the nice things about machine learning. Let me see what's happened with the human. A blood, the human is trained, is using the human. So 99.9, that's human, which is cool. And if I do this, let's do the nothing. Let's see what's happening here. Somehow the nothing is recognized as fish. Somehow this is close to a fish. So I need to probably improve my model and put this as a nothing. But the cool things about this is that once I train my model, I can export this model and use this model as a Docker file. In example, I can export this um, using running in Docker, where we are going to have uh, all of the information available at an endpoint, so we can browse and use it as an ONIC file. The Docker file, you can run the Docker in Linux window or even in Raspberry Pi, which is super cool. And I have one here running in my machine, in my Docker machine. Let me close this which is, and I used to do this when I have my office, now I am moving to houses, but this used to be my office. I have a wall in the back with a lot of MVP signs. Uh, I train a model to recognize MVPs. So it's here running locally. And I have one of my, let me switch back to oh, this one. It's here running locally for the MVP. And I have right one demo, which is basically connecting locally and showing, analyzing the image and showing the result when I find, when it finds an MVP award. But I mentioned Azure IoT. I am going to do this at the end if we have some time. What is cool about this also is that right now we can also do some Azure IoT integration. We have the information, we have the drone, and we can quickly send this info to an Azure IoT instance because we have information from the drone. We have the altitude, the temperature, the battery, and a lot of information. And we can connect this in Azure IoT. There is a way also to do this in a very fast way, which is using the IoT Central. IoT Central doesn't require you to do a lot of. It gives you basically a couple of dashboards, and you can use it out of the out of the box. And I created here a template, which is a template with a couple of capabilities for the drone. I have three values with the telemetry, telemetry which is. Uh, acceleration for the x, uh, x, y, and axis x, y, and c, and then the battery and the temperature. I have a couple of views here that I define it, and I have a new view here with a couple of charts, and then I create a drone. Then I create a new device. Let's put this code gen one. I will use the template that I have created. I can create here a a drone, I can create here a, a device, and then I need to connect to the device. And when I see connect, I give me information of how should I connect. So I write, the, I write a couple of lines of code here in the Azure IoT, where I basically have the info from the drone, connect to the drone, do everything that we have. And then if I copy this connect information, it's the code, the device ID is Code gen and the key is this one. When I connect the drone, I'm sorry, when I connect, I am connecting to the drone, in the terminal loop that I have here to get the camera and do everything, what I am doing is going to send telemetry to the drone. And this will automatically upload in the in the Azure IoT central information about the axis A, G, and C. And after a couple of seconds also, I don't know why I'm not sending the battery. I think I send the battery only at the beginning. Send telemetry and send properties. I miss this line. Oh, there it is. And I also send the properties with the temperature and the battery, but not all the time, every 10 seconds, because I am not Showing the camera here, I am going to basically wait a second between these. So if I run this, let me go back here. We can see that this is empty. This is not doing anything. Let's put this one here. And Azure IoT, let's put this one here, clear. I have all of these files. We can't see the name, so this is the 66. 
So if I am running the, the last one, and I am connected to the drone, I will see information from the drone here in real time. Let's try this. So I am turning on the drone. I've done this 20 times today. Let's wait until I get the IP and the pin connected back. One more time, just in case. I am connected, so I can go here and run this demo. So this one is going to take information from the drone, connect the drone to, to the Azure IoT Central, and I start to send information. I don't care about the image here. I just I put here a simple image to have some to have something to show. But it's sending information. IoT Central, depending on the network, is it's real time, but it's not second per second. But it's going to show information after a couple of seconds about the drone. So you will see here that it already received the one. The battery is 78%. I don't think that is fine, but it's correct. And if I start to move the drone around after a couple of seconds, it will show that the drone is, I don't know, I changed the accelerometer. So if I move this, it's starting to, it start to draw the lines there. So let me move this and while I move, I will drink some. Some coffee, I am moving this. I think I need to wait five, six seconds. Yes, it's starting to show the line, it's starting to show, to, to draw. And hey, this is the drone sending information in real time for this. So this is connected to the Azure IoT, and basically we can control remotely a drone. Remember, this is a test, this is a toy, this is not for production, but this info is right now in Azure IoT, and it's kind of cool to have, we are going to, if you are planning to do this. By the way, Azure IoT, you can test this for free for seven days, and it's super, super cool to do some quick, quick prototyping with this. So I will put the drone here. Let me enable the drone camera also. Yep, not this one, this one. The drone is there, it's not moving. I will put something in the bottom so it's still there, and it will start to show information. So I am at the end here. I will go for the question right now. Let's do a quick recap of what we did. Oh, let me hide the drone. So I talked at the beginning how to do the SDK. We didn't have SDK, so we need to create one by your own. Then I talk about how we, open, we can use OpenCV to access the camera, connect via UDP. I do some face detection with OpenCV. I show you can how you can create your own model, custom visionary and containers, even show uh, if you use a pre-trained model, how it works. And at the end, I show a couple of Azure IoT things. All of the links, all of the stuff that I told about the drone, the SDK, all of the blog that I write about this, everything is going to be here. I will share this the slides later. And also, I write a lot about how you can set up your environment for this, because that's a tricky part. So that's basically it. I will read the questions right now. Uh, I will read the question. There are no questions. There are a couple of moments where the screen was freezing. Sorry about that. Yes. It's the, the the connection that I have here because I'm missing this with the drone and everything is doing that, but I hope it was good enough. And if you see here, hey, I'm still sending information, still connecting to the drone, still working, no battery. Sadly, the battery is 37%. I don't know why the battery is reading 94 here. Oh, I know why. I am basically sending the temperature here as the battery value and the other temperature is the battery. So sorry about that, but this is live coding. This is what's happened when I read this. So any questions? Remember, you can contact me in my blog in elbruno.com. Oh, let me go to the first slide. You can contact me there. And if there is no question, I will close this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marco, and everyone who was in the back organizing this. It was a pleasure. And hey, see you next one. Marco, are we good to close?
Okay, bye-bye.